My name is Ann Herondell and I live in Port Townsend, Washington. I've been here now since um, 1976 and this is where I started my real work after I finished at the University of Washington. Um, I've been very fortunate because I've been able to do this work the whole time and support myself doing it, teaching some at workshops. I've never had a full-time teaching job. And what I tell people and have when I'm teaching is um, I have a very rich life. It doesn't involve a lot of money, but it's a fabulous life. And so I, I just feel grateful that Bob and I made the decision to move here and have been able to carve out a life. Ceramics Monthly, um, did put a picture of my studio on the cover and I asked me to write a feature article. And it was that work that, and that article really, that launched my career. And when peop different people around the country saw the work, like it was funny, I told Bob the phone rang for about a month. And of course I was so naive, I had no idea who a lot of these people were. But anyway, it gave me the courage to keep, keep on with what I was doing, which I did. And um, so for years, I made vessels that I um, glazed with the glaze I created and um, started, and I really thought of them as sculpture, but I relied heavily on that, on the vessel tradition. Mm. So sometimes when people ask me if I'm an artist or say that I'm an artist, I, I really say, you know, what I really am is an arranger. And that's why I start, I mean, even with pots, you know, my favorite form was a teapot because it, in a sense, were, there were so many parts and there was deconstruction involved in creating them. And um, so there's just something it's real innate for me, whether it's arranging furniture in a room or paper on another paper or a three-dimensional form, it's, you know, it's, it's sort of intuitive, but, and extremely satisfying when I get it right. I mean, I'm just, it's, it's just who I am, you know, and I can't help myself in, even in my house. I mean, I'm always making sure everything's, I mean, it's kind of, I guess it's an obsessive compulsive disorder. But it's just the, the deep satisfaction from having order and having that in a sculpture or a drawing or a fold of paper drawing. Uh, to me, it's just an ultimate sense of rightness and satisfaction. How this new folded paper work came to be, for many years, beginning in the um, late 90s, I did drawings and I did them on layered tracing paper. I was invited by a place in Maine called Watershed. They did had a show every year called Paper Pots. And I had declined for a couple years because I didn't draw. And, and so finally that year I said, okay, I'm going to try. And I was invited, to, uh, went to New York City with a friend and I knew when I got back I'd have two weeks to get this drawing made in, in the mail or I could just not do it. And when I was in New York at NYU there was an exhibit of Maya Lin's work and I've always, I get goosebumps kind of when I think about her and she had these drawings on what I think was tracing paper but it might have been vellum and just with graphite they were so simple and so beautiful and I said to myself I could do that you know I could just make a simple drawing on tracing paper so I came back to Port Townsend and I didn't know what to draw so I had to draw a pot and so what I started doing was deconstructing a pot I'd made 
And um, an example of that is what was on the cover of American Craft. So I would draw it from a front-on perspective. I would draw the shape of the opening and several different views and on different layers, on different pieces of tracing paper, and then I'd start layering them. And it was really interesting what would happen by doing that. And then on a number of them, especially early on, I would actually tape the paper that I had, some of them, the one I had drawn on, onto my pottery wheel. And then using an eraser, I would erase and it would create this wonderful shape from, from the, um, what I had drawn, but also it also was what, if you looked inside of one of my vessels, that's what you saw was that swirl because it was, sort of was a signature thing I did whenever I threw a pot. Anyway, so I, I did that and I actually made a piece and sent it to the exhibit. And then that was the beginning. It was like, all right, I can draw, I can make drawings. From then on, when I had a ceramic show and for 12 years with Francine, I would make the forms and glaze them, every whatever, paint them. And then I would make drawings, abstracting those forms. And in, for a long while, those were just as satisfying as the sculptures themselves. So then I'm invited to be in a drawing show in Port Townsend, and it's like, oh, what am I gonna do? I'm not making pots anymore. But I had on my, in my tracing paper some of the big tablets. There was a section at the top that was five inches long in the width of the tablet. So I just took those off and started folding them. And then that, wow, that's kind of like what I did with some of my later clay pieces, you know, the, um, that I just would cut them apart and put them back together. So that's how it started. And at first it was just smaller ones. And then eventually I thought, well, I could make, you know, do more pieces. And, and actually, you know, it's, I maybe want to try a even larger combination of the forms just to see what might happen. But um, so that show here led me to the work I'm doing now. Um, I'm, the backgrounds are painted with the same paint that I use to paint my vessels. It's uh, latex from the hardware store, best quality I can get, and golden acrylics, and I mix the colors. Um, and then it's folded tracing paper, and so far that's what I like best. Um, and any color is just Prismacolor, colored pencil, because you can't get tracing paper wet. Or it cr crumbles up. Although I have, I'm, I have some ideas that might, <laughs> with crumpled tracing paper, but that's down the road. 